Good morning, everybody. Morning. We are up bright and early today before the sun's up. We're heading on a road trip. We got to go about, I don't know, four or five hours uh, in one direction to pick up another piece of the adventure puzzle. Stay tuned to see what it is. Here it comes. Drives like a Jeep. So we picked up this uh, Jeep yesterday. It's a 2003 TJ. And uh, I'd shop for a Jeep for a while to tow behind the uh, B, but um, it seems most of the Jeeps for sale are, you know, I was looking for something with a lift, some tires that's ready to go off road, maybe a Rubicon. Um, and, you know, with maybe a winch and bumpers and things like that. So I didn't need to add all that stuff, but it seems like most of the Jeeps for sale are really high in the mileage like you know you're talking 200,000 kilometers or more a lot of them and uh, this one we found was in the similar price range to all the other ones but it only has 35,000 kilometers so low kilometers owned by an older gentleman one owner since it was new and uh, as you can see it's in pretty good shape it's got I think a three inch lift with some you know upgraded shocks and things nothing too you know extravagant a pretty basic lift but um i think it's going to suit our purposes just fine and it's in good shape it's a good platform to start with um we're going to need to set up some sort of a tow bar on the front so we can tow it of course a braking system and uh maybe a few little upgrades right now i'm just going to give it a once over on Ontario here, we have to get a safety check, so I'll have to bring it into a, uh, a garage. I'll bring it into the Dodge dealer and get them to uh, do a safety inspection on it. Um, just from a quick look around, it looks pretty good. Everything seems to work that I can see, yet to do a brake check or a front end check. Um, those are really the only things that are unknown right now, I think. Everything else looks pretty good. Needs a driver's side windshield wiper. That's pretty minor. So I'll get into the brake check and the front end check right now. I have my uh, lazy man's jack or vehicle hoist um, on there right now. So I'm going to check out the back brakes. Then I'll get on to uh, a front end check and the front brakes. Uh, the You know, the rotors look really good in there. They're not even rusty. This thing was stored indoors most of the time or I think maybe all the time. So it's it's in, it seems to be in exceptionally good shape. So we'll get into that and see what we find. So this is something you don't see in a 21 year old vehicle normally. The drum has the little clips that come from the factory to hold the drum on for assembly before the wheels bolted on. And usually 
the first time the drum is ever taken off those things are just peeled off and they're gone because they don't really serve a purpose other than holding the drum on before you bolt the wheel on on the assembly line and uh, they're still on there so I assume these drums have never been taken off could be a bad thing could be a good thing I don't know but uh, definitely she hasn't been fiddled with much so and they painted the drums so we'll get them off and see what's in there things look pretty mint in here no leaking on the wheel cylinder no leaking on the axle seal lots of brake shoe left incredible wow even the brake adjuster just turns by hand usually they're just a ball of rust so looks pretty mint over here I have my lovely assistant in the driver's seat that's going to wiggle the steering wheel back and forth and uh, basically I just want to have a look at all these front end parts all the tie rod ends and everything and make sure that nothing moves excessively oh that has a grease fitting on it even okay wiggle it we don't see any movement there. Seems pretty tight. Had a little look at things under the hood. Air filter looks okay. The uh, serpentine belt looks okay. There was a uh, hose for the uh, PCV system that was pretty cracked. So that was starting to leak a little bit of air past which wouldn't be air going through the air filter. So that's not good. You can get dirty air in there. It was just kind of just getting there so I put a piece of hose on there I had to use some clamps because the hose I had was a little bit bigger but that'll do for now and uh, battery terminals were loose and a little dirty so I cleaned those up and tightened them up topped up the coolant it was down a little bit in the overflow bottle engine oil's good well it's full but it's old so it smells old so we'll have to do an oil change on it I'll get a filter from uh, from the Chrysler dealer get a good old Mopar filter and uh, other than that, everything looks pretty good in here. The uh, belt pulleys, the idler, and the, the one on the fan, they look a little rusty just because this thing hasn't run much, I think. I'm sure they'll clean up. They sound smooth right now, so I think they'll be okay. And uh, we're on to checking the front end. So I got the front end lifted up. Marianne already wiggled the steering, so I checked all the tire right in. So now I want to check the uh, ball joints. They feel tight by hand, and yeah, it feels tight with a bar. So we don't see any movement on the lower or upper ball joint. They seem tight. And uh, the wheels are a little hard to turn, though. I kind of think the brakes are dragging. So I don't know if maybe we just need uh, to clean up the slides on those calipers, or maybe we're going to need new calipers, but... I'll pull the wheels off, we'll have a look at those. Okay, we got the wheels bolted back on. The uh, One of the slides on the driver's side was pretty tight. It wasn't rusty or anything, it was just, uh, you know, the, the old uh, lube was a little dried up and it gets thick, so. We got those lubed up, got the uh, both wheels back on. I'm just gonna jam the brakes on here and see if it's any better. tight definitely tight we'll have to drive it again and check it we'll drive it we'll uh, monitor the temperatures on there see if it seems like they're dragging and um, maybe just a little bit of driving will get things moving around so that's my pre-safety inspection inspection everything looks pretty good um, really like incredibly good I think we really scored on this one Needs a driver's side windshield wiper as far as I'm concerned. It doesn't clean the windshield good enough. If I was safeting it, I would call that. Other than that, it's good. Everything's good for safety. So we'll uh, contact the good guys down at Trans Canada Chrysler tomorrow and get it booked in this week for safety. And maybe today we'll take it for a little back road burn and uh, see how things work. I think Marianne's itching to get in the driver's seat. So. We better get that done. We're on a test drive. Mary Ann's driving. A long time since I've driven a standard. She still remembers how. So this is how we end up. Shades of blue and gray. I'll feel just
Our test ride was a success. What do you think? It was fun. So <laughs> that we... was pretty boring. That was that was fun. <laughs> <laughs> that was fun. That was fun. So uh, we need new front brake calipers. They're dragging, and we gotta low. see if we can adjust the shifter for four low. Doesn't seem to get in there all the way, and the rear windshield washer's leaking. Yeah. Other than that, she's mint. A few things to do to the Jeep before we hit the road. If we're going to tow this behind the uh, truck and camper, we need a tow setup. And also, we're going to need a winch if we're going to go get stupid off road. So, um, I have an old winch. I kind of cheated a little bit and bought a winch bracket so I can just bolt it right on and save me a bit of time. So, uh, this winch bracket will bolt right on with the bumper bolts. We'll get that old winch bolted on there and then we'll have to get that wired up and stuff. So I got the winch all wired up. I got the solenoid block here. Positive runs across over to the battery over there. And negative also runs, hooks to the bottom of this. Negative lead carries on to the winch. So this winch has three wires going to it. F1, F2, and A, which I assume is armature. Oh, and the ground wire. So that's four wires going to it. Then the uh, controller wire. I've run it through the firewall, poked a little hole in the grommet, pulled it through, and I have it here. I'm gonna run that across under the dash, and I've mounted the plug for the winch right there where the ashtray would go in a ashtray one. So I'll just have to hook up to these wires, and then uh, my winch controller will plug into that. I know all the new ones have wireless, but this is what I have. So then we have this controller, not the longest wire, uh, not ideal. A little longer would be better, but at least I can get out front and actually see what the winch does while I control it. So we'll try winch out, winch out, winch in, winch in. Sweet, it works. Okay, so this is the uh, tow bar mount I've come up with. Um, I have the blue ox tow bar and the inserts, but I don't have the vehicle specific bracket or any kind of a bracket. So I don't have the tubes that these fit into and lock in. So I'm just going to attach these to this angle. Angle is going to sit like this, bolt to the bottom bumper bolts there and there. And um, I'm going to add an extra bolt that goes up through the middle of the bumper in the middle, another half inch bolt for extra security. There's also going to be safety chains or safety cables that hook from the vehicle tow hooks all the way up to the truck also. And so these are just going to, I cut a little notch in the back of the angle. They're going to sit up there like that and they'll stick out the front of the vehicle. I'll be able to get a good weld around the base of the thing here and then all around the back where it's in this slotted notch. So we'll have a really good attachment point. And um, this will be on the vehicle all the time though. That's the only drawback. These will be sticking out the front a little bit. Um, but, you know, if we're going to use the vehicle for a period of time without the without towing it, it's just a matter of taking out these three bolts and taking this bracket right off. So not that big of a deal and we don't got to buy an expensive vehicle specific tow bar. Let's get this welded up.
So we got it good and welded around the back here and down both sides and across the bottom too. So that should be good and solid. We'll get the other one on there and uh, try and fit it on the vehicle. So there's the trial fit of the uh, tow bar bracket on the Jeep. It's all bolted in place. Um, just the trial fit though, I'm going to take it off and paint it still, but you can see the angles just under the bumper there and uh, these things stick out probably four inches. So if we're doing any hardcore off-roading, we'll probably want to unbolt that, take out the three bolts. I think for the center bolt, I'm going to take the bumper off weld a nut on the inside similar to the ends have and then there's going to be no holding of nuts or anything just take the three bolts out and off it comes and uh, yeah because you wouldn't want to ram that into a rock off road and bend it and then you'd be kind of screwed for towing so but uh, looks good we'll get that painted up and looking sharp okay center bolt of the bumper for the tow hitch we have a little metal plate with a nut welded to it and we're just going to tack that in place because we can't get a wrench in there when we want to take that bolt in and out. So one more thing required for the Jeep is to be able to plug it into our truck trailer wiring so we have taillights on the Jeep and we get our turn signal brake all that stuff. So this should make it pretty simple. We got a Towed vehicle wiring kit, Hopkins number 56202 that is supposed to be the kit for this 2003 Jeep TJ which has the factory plugs on it. So all we should have to do is unplug the taillights, plug this in line, run the wire up to the front. It's got the box that stops the back feeding. So it should make our life really simple. It's just a matter of getting under there, unplugging a few things and running this wire along. So we'll get this installed and then hopefully we'll have lights on the Jeep. So I use this uh, wire puller with a hook on the end, ran it over top the gas tank in, and the skid plate goes up so you can't really get things through there so ran over top the gas tank pulled the wires through they're uh, coming up there and then I run up in behind the frame and there's my connectors right there so I can plug those in and then tidy up all the wiring underneath we're ready to do a light test yeah, I look like a bit of a dork but it works so I don't have the wires run yet. I just kind of have them run along the ground, plugged into the truck. Uh, the ground wire on this harness, actually, you see that little white wire there? I just have a little test lead hooked to it, grounded out to a ground point on the Jeep, just for testing. So we'll do a light test for you here. Dark lights, brake lights. Left turn, right turn. So it looks like it all works. So I can run all the wires neatly now. Uh, the cool thing with this, actually, with having a really high truck camper, is a vehicle following behind. Not only will see these tail lights, but they'll probably be able to see the tail lights on the truck camper too, right over top of the Jeep. <laughs> So we have the Jeep tow bar all set up, ready to go. Um, we'll try a hookup with it, see how it goes. So I should be able to drive up and get relatively close or relatively within the required distance. And uh, then we can hook it up. Let's see if I can do it. I think that's pretty good. These things, you can just release it and slide it out. That goes in there. Uh, I must have put my clips down somewhere. Then I have these Blue Ox safety cables and uh, we'll crisscross. So we got the rubber retainer on the safety thing on the truck and then the chains on the truck go up to the hitch so everything's secure there. 
crisscross. I'm just going to the hooks on the Jeep. They go right into the frame. Then when the truck pulls away, these things should lock into place and we're ready to pull. We'll see what happens. Yeah, so instead I just did it by backing up the Jeep, same as pulling the truck ahead, but um, pulls them out, they lock in and we're real secure. I got to find my pins that go in there and uh, then we just plug in the wires for the tail lights and we're good to go. So I found my pins, putting them in. I already got that one in and uh, that's a reminder to me. Carry some extra pins. I'll probably want to carry one or two of those. Maybe another one or two of these too. I think these are a half inch pin. Just like a regular tow bar pin I would think. And uh, I'll probably want to carry an extra one of those too. Just in case so we don't get in a bind. One thing I didn't mention is we selected the Jeep TJ because it's a flat tow vehicle. Some vehicles not recommend a flat tow. You don't get proper lubrication in the transmission when the input shaft isn't driving. So when we tow the Jeep, we put the transfer case in neutral, then we leave the transmission in gear. People say second gear, fifth gear, something like that. I'm not sure, but as long as the transmission's not turning, then you're not, um, you're, you don't need lubrication in the transmission. So only the transfer case is turning. So that's why we're towing a Jeep TJ. So there's a view of the whole thing hooked up. I thought I was gonna have to drop the hitch on the truck to get a fairly level uh, tow bar, but I actually didn't. It worked out where the hitch height was. Uh, I was, uh, and I ended up mounting under the bumper. So it's a little bit down, but that was a convenient place to mount. I think you wanna keep these hitches as level as possible. I'm not on perfectly level ground either. So, uh, you know, it's really close to level. I think uh, we're looking pretty good. So, there's the package you're going to see out on the road. Thank you for watching. If you're enjoying this video, please consider hitting the like and subscribe buttons. It's free and greatly supports the channel. And also consider checking out our Patreon page. The link is right here, as well as in the description. And there, you can get some real-time updates, behind-the-scenes content, and more. Hope to see you there.